Geoffrey Archer writes all of his stories with a felt-tip pen. Is this the truth or the opposite? Hang on, he wrote a book when he was in prison. He so did. all we need to know to work out this is true is can you get felt-tip pens in prison? Anyone? Frankie, yeah. you'll know this. What can you get in prison? It depends just how much loving you're prepared to give. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan, you've been in prison. Have you? We had a short period of time. What for? Yeah, no, I agree with Frankie. No, never mind agreeing with Frankie. <laughs> Duncan, tell us about the murder. <laughs> you can get anything in jail. Anything really? you want. What were you in prison for? Well, just, just you know. Tell us. <laughs> I think it was drunk and disorderly. You mean think? How drunk were you? <laughs> oh, look at that. Suddenly the dragon tamed, methinks. What do you mean? It's, it, it's, in, it's, it, it's in the autobiography. I'm getting it. What's it called? called? Anyone can do it. Well, you say anyone, apart from the 80% of people you tell to sod off. Uh, anyone can make 100 million, that's in the book. It tells you how to do it. Really? If everyone makes 100 million, won't that be terribly inflationary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. If everyone makes 100 million except you, you're going to be yeah. pretty small, aren't you? Absolutely. But maybe yeah. this is something that happened in Italy in the Lira days. You know, someone like you yeah. published a book, and then <laughs> suddenly, yeah, everyone has got 100 million and they can't buy a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, uh, I'm going to have to push you for some kind of an answer on this one. Well, Geoffrey Archer. Um, get Geoffrey Archer on this show. Geoffrey Archer on a show about lying would punch a hole through time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have Geoffrey Archer because he's been in prison. Oh, oh you have. <laughs> How did you know he was in prison? Uh, I read his autobiography. Thank you. <laughs> Which was spectacularly poor. <laughs> OK. Just out um, of interest, when you finish having sex, do you say, I'm out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is his foreplay, which is, I'm in for 40%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Jeffrey. I think yes. he does. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, th I think that I Team think um, I think he does as well. Then I think if you okay. if you're saying he does, we're on a lucky streak. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, then we'll say uh, he does. He does, and the fact is, he does. Yeah. It's completely true. Yeah. This is in fact true. Jeffrey Archer does write all of his stories with a felt tip pen. His first job, incidentally, was working for Oxfam, and he still has a unique connection as they're now the main stockists of his books. <laughs> David's team. Your quote comes from the uh, great 20th century poet, essayist and raconteur Jody Marsh. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm thick, but what they don't know is that I won nearly six pounds on a Weakest Link <laughs> quiz machine. <laughs> if I was going to make up a lie like that, I'd reach for the stars and say a tenner. <laughs> really say, yeah. One thing yes, about that please. quote which is really sad is, I know that I won nearly six pounds. What's nearly oh, six pounds? What, so Why did she not pounds? say five pounds well, forty? Well, oh, actually, but those machines, they don't give check. They give quid, single quid. So right. nearly six, the nearest to six no. pounds she's got Sorry. is five pounds. <laughs> you can't say five... I mean, what, you know, as a businessman, where are your accounts when you start calling five pounds nearly six? <laughs> Suddenly, five billion pounds mm. is nearly six billion pounds. That's a billion yeah. pound shortfall. <laughs> This was uh, the 27th birthday party of, of one of her friends when she got very, very drunk. If you had to get someone to answer a question on a quiz machine to save your life, right, would you get Jodie Marsh? I would rather that she fell drunkenly onto the quiz machine with her face <laughs> and chose the answer that way rather than using <laughs> a body of knowledge. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to press you for an answer, I'm um, afraid. So yes. True or lie? You think it's true? Yep, it's true. You don't care, you just want to murder her. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's false. Yeah, right. I don't know, but that's the game. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's false. They're saying it's false. It is indeed a lie. <laughs> Absolutely correct. Well deduced. Uh, Jodie Marsh did not win six pounds on a Weakest Link quiz machine. Jodie left school with 11 GCSEs and three A-levels. I don't know whose they were, but she left school with them. <laughs> uh, despite allegations of being thick, Jodie is a very successful glamour model. 36, 24, 32, no one's exactly sure what her IQ is. Uh, Telly Tales is the brilliantly alliterative title of our next round. David's team will follow up a clip from a classic TV series with an additional fantastic fact. Lee's team then declare whether the fact is either the truth 
or complete Piers Morgan. And tonight we bring you the delights of Vintage Doctor Who, a show uh, with the same budget as a school nativity play but with slightly lower production values. <laughs> well, here's a quick reminder of some of the Doctor's multiple incarnations. <laughs> Social call. They will be bombarded. We've been asked to point out no Daleks were harmed in the making of that clip, <laughs> although the actor inside has never walked again. <laughs> uh, but what is Frankie's extra piece of information, Frankie? Well, it's a little known fact, but to avoid confusion on the set of Doctor Who when they're filming it, the medical doctor on set is called the magician. <laughs> so you think about true, it, there or... could be confusion because obviously the doctor is Tom Baker or whoever. Obviously it's a much bigger problem on casualty. <laughs> I don't understand the confusion. Someone, an extra, say Ina, who's working on Doctor Who has a heart attack, and someone shouts, is there a doctor here? And oh. Doctor Who, confused, <laughs> says yes and does surgery until someone says, no, 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 no. I mean, it's not really a doctor. I know TV people are, like, dim, but... <laughs> if you're the person that's ill, it's going to be quite a depressing thing to hear someone shout. They sort of see what's happened to you and say, mm. fetch the magician. Because <laughs> that's what we're going to need. <laughs> fetch the magician or the priest. <laughs> I think it's a superstition. I think that's the answer. It's like, you so, know, you're whistling is supposed to be bad luck, break so a So basically, leg someone comes on set, it's like, the, it's like the Macbeth thing or Hamlet thing, whatever, you're not supposed to say it, is it? Exactly that. So it's what happens, you're trying to convince exactly us now, Angus, that someone would walk in mm -hmm. and say, uh, so is that, the, is, that, that, is that the resident doctor? And somebody pops out of a Dalek and goes, <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Rules and the superstitions. <laughs> you bloody idiot. Now I've got to turn down system? three times the spit. <laughs> We're not joking. Lee, could we have your answer? Yes, yeah, sorry. Think? What do you think that's in summary? I'm going to say it's um, false. false. I think it's false. Yeah, Dom? I think it's true now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense. But it's telly, it doesn't have to make sense, so they um, probably do. I am have to, I'm going to have to overrule you there, Dom, and go for Natalie's decision there and say that it is, in fact... That is leadership. ...not true. Frankie? It's... It is a lie. Thank it was, in fact, lying. The medical doctor on the set of Doctor Who is not called the magician. Uh, there are many traditions that are kept up by actors. For example, break a leg means good luck. The Scottish play means Macbeth. And integral to the plot means getting your tits out to sell more tickets. <laughs> Madonna has her toilet seat removed from every venue she performs at so that no-one sells it on eBay. I mean, the thing is that maybe by removing the toilet seat, she's created this sort of mystique. Oh, she has to remove her toilet seats, otherwise people will want to sell them. And in reality, no one would want to sell something that her old arse had touched. <laughs> and so the toilet seat, when they get taken away, where do they go to? A big toilet seat warehouse. They buy a new seat every time uh, and then throw it away at the end. It's a bit obsessive-compulsive, actually, isn't it? It's like people who keep their wee in labelled jars. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true. Very obsessive-compulsive people can sometimes do that. They sort of, as it were, file their various excreta. <laughs> How would you know? How would I know? About well, filing I, those sorts of well, things. I am a knowledgeable man, and it's part of my knowledge. <laughs> you know, if I, if I knew how I knew everything I knew, <laughs> then I, I'd only be able to know half as much, because it would all be clogged up with where I know it from. <laughs> so I, I cannot always cite my sources, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My lad. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are other artists who do the same thing. Janet Jackson and Mary J. Blige um, also insist on having their toilet seats removed. <laughs> so what, uh, what are you veering towards? Um, well, it's that's pretty I true. Think it's feasible. It's, it's, yeah. it's feasible. Okay. I'm just worried about these stars with huge warehouses full of old loo seats. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I'm worried about them. I, no, I, I, there's no reason why I should give a <laughs> shit whether they live or die. <laughs> <laughs> She's not doing it, is she? She's not got the spanner and re to putting her thing on. So someone else is coming in, she's totally yeah. unaware of it, just gets done, one of those things. <laughs> hey, are you, Madonna, I, I want to get off early. Are you going to need to go again before the end of the 
or, or can I remove it now? I know it's not... you know, you know, I want to, I want to get home before eleven if I can. So, will you need another shit tonight? <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I can wait. I can wait. But maybe, maybe you could go now if you're ready. So, so you maybe it's for? not true. No, go with your gut instinct. Okay, please. we say it's it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, and it is indeed true. Oh, come on. Yep. Sorry. It is true. Uh, Madonna does have all her toilet seats removed from every concert venue to prevent them being sold on eBay. She also had all the decent songs removed from her last album to prevent them. being... <laughs> Sold at HMV. Uh, please, team, uh, your teaser. Tony Blair proposed to Cherie in a bumper car. <laughs> to me, they look more like uh, roller coaster people, don't they? That's sort of like. <laughs> 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 that, that's why her face is always like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the joke. But that was... <laughs> it was a visual. It was a visual. You know. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm shit at time travel. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll um, tell you what, though, I'm shit at time travel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, true lie, neither or, both. What do you think, Dom? Dare I say, poppycock, I think. <laughs> I think true. You think true? Yeah, yeah. Really? But you are team captain, Lee, so it's your word that is final. Well, I, I have to say that I'm slightly, um, leaning towards John. Don't. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I, I suspect that actually... <laughs> That, that could be true mm. as well. And also it explains a lot as well, because there's a massive metal bar at the front, isn't there? <laughs> well, I was going to say no, but no, I, I, I better say that. Because I'm not going to get asked again. Um, that is the truth. The truth. So help me God. Right, OK, and I can Please. tell you that Come on. it is indeed a complete rubbish. It's oh. a... Uh, it's a lie. Tony Blair did not propose to Cherie in a bumper car. Uh, Cherie doesn't like going to fun fairs. Everyone thinks that if they throw three balls in her mouth, they win a foam Shrek. <laughs> our next round right. is Telly Tales, in which we revisit one of our national televisual treasures, and David's team astound us with an additional related fact. Tonight, the subject of our scrutiny is EastEnders, so let's just remind ourselves what it was like living in the world of the common people. Cow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come down here and give you a dry slap. You slut. You want another one? No, I don't think so. Shut up, I'm not 70. I don't like your earrings. <laughs> Stand out of carpet, sir. How dare you? A host of familiar faces from the past being punched, slapped and nutted. <laughs> of course, many people consider the golden period of the show to be about eight o'clock when it ends. <laughs> uh, so, Panny's fascinating fact is after this piece of beautifully understated dialogue. Hey! Hey! I'm sorry! I love you! So, uh, what is uh, Paddy's intriguing piece of uh, Pat Butcher <laughs> trivia? Pam St. Clements is a member of the British Abseiling Association. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and has abseiled down Mount Rushmore. <laughs> as true as I'm sat here. Uh, oh, well, who's Pat St. Clements? <laughs> I have no clue. She's the woman we just saw that looked like something from the creature from oh, the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> She plays Pat. Pat, Pat in EastEnders. Pat. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. I don't know her by her real name. Okay. Well, you do now. British Abseiling Association. What the hell were the British Abseiling Association doing in the United States? Abseiling. Ab yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> She's quite a formidable woman, is Pat. That's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> oh, you're formidable. <laughs> well, I mean, she looks like she could abseil. I'll give her yeah. that. Really? Oh, I reckon she could do it without rope. Very quickly. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's it's false. I think it's so so unlikely that it's likely. Does that make sense? Yes, you think it's false? I think it's false, but go for true if you want to go for true because you said you've never won. All right, hissy mother. All right. <laughs> All right, well, let's go with you and no, you better no, be right. No, no, no. no, no, no. You, you, no. You've made it there. You can lie on it. I, I doubt it very much, but John's always right, so I think... I don't understand why we have to sit here and watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, for God's sake, make your f***ing mind up. And did points of view get back to you? <laughs> um, I would say that the answer to that question is that it is indeed, going by John's answer, oh. false. OK, let's find out how correct you are, Paddy. Truth or baloney? It's a lie! Yay! Yay! John was right. Yes, uh, Paddy was in fact uh, lying. Pam St. Clement is not a member of the British Abseiling Association and has not abseiled down Mount Rushmore, although she did mount the north face of Frank Butcher. <laughs> To coincide with the US version of The Weakest Link, uh, Ben & Jerry released a limited edition and Robinson flavoured ice cream. An ice cream with a case solely of bile and remorse. I, I can't <laughs> see that. Not so. It sold out in two weeks. Very popular. When you opened the tin, was the surface of it really taut in an unnatural kind of way? Because <laughs> you couldn't possibly break into the ice cream beneath. <laughs> She's doing that thing in the photo, that wink thing, isn't she, which always unnerves me, cos she does it at the end of The Weakest Link to sort of say, you know, like, it's She's all a joke, I'm not really evil. But that's the bit that scares the crap out of me. And the thing is, though, that, that wink is the only thing that... She used to do that on Points of View as well, and she's sort of trying to say that she's in some way being consistent. Well, ah. In Points of View, she didn't read out the people's letters and then just say, you know, f*** off. <laughs> <laughs> but she does to the answers of the nice people on The Weakest Link who are trying to win a quiz. Do you think when you oh. open the ice cream, it just has, it has written on top, use a proper spoon, dickhead! Yeah. <laughs> there are precedents. Right. Uh, well, they, they've made the Desperate person. Housewives editions uh, called Cherry Hatcher. So what was the Anne Robinson one called? Uh, Ginger Ice Queen. <laughs> oh. Ginger ice cream's really nice. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna taste it like of ginger, Chinese. not of that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ginger is a recognised pleasant flavour. She's a recognised asshole. <laughs> you know, that's, that's totally different. That's you know, like it's just people put. who can, who like ginger enough to be able to stomach the side of her face while they eat it. Now, I can right. believe that those people exist. So that's suddenly it's become a lot more plausible. Why suddenly you're saying that ice cream, ice cream, the flavour of a woman who's undergone loads of surgery, is obsessed with money, and for some reason considers herself witty. No, no, no. Ginger ice cream with a picture of that bitch. Yes. <laughs> Next week, when Anne Robinson is our guest, you'll be on Lee's team. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Anne. I like Anne. I, we went for a meal with Anne Robinson, do you remember? Yes. It was a, it was a BBC meal. And she came up to me and she went, Are you a scheduler? And I thought, no, I'm going to go with She went, yeah, I am. Well, why have you rescheduled my show? <laughs> and I went, well, Anne thought I was going to go along with it. It's because she actually thinks I'm scheduling shows. So I said, because it's not very good. <laughs> do you mean it's no good? It needs to be on later, is it? It's absolutely rubbish, Anne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 is that how she really talks? She talks like yeah. that. <laughs> she, does it. She, every she was going like, can I have more wine? <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. It's a, I'm a pretend evil witch. <laughs> what are we thinking? I think it's true. I think it's Indeed. true, Jimmy. Oh, Rika? Yeah. We okay. I think it's true. OK, we'll go for true. OK, they're saying it's true. David, your verdict. It all boils down to this. Would you nibble her or not? Well, I mean, I certainly wouldn't, as, no. as I think <laughs> I've made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, neither metaphorically nor... In real life, oh, I'm actually going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's true. Uh, I don't think it's true. <laughs> okay, we're going to say it's a lie. And you'd be absolutely right. It is a lie. <laughs> it's complete rubbish. <laughs> yes, uh, Ben and Jerry did not manufacture an Anne Robinson flavoured ice cream, although the plan had been to freeze the ingredients by holding them next to Anne Robinson's heart. <laughs> <laughs> pioneering children's infotainment series Blue Peter. Since it first hit our screens in 1958, Blue Peter has inspired thousands of kids to watch the other side. <laughs> so let's just remind ourselves of some of its wilder moments. <laughs> well, that's that then. That's tossing it. Oh, 
quite so lovely. Unfortunately, the goat that you saw in that excerpt has died. <laughs> Thank you. Oh! Hello. Hello. So, Ulrika, what is your related fact? Uh, <clears throat> Petra, the first Blue Peter dog, died the day after her first show. So producers secretly replaced her with a look-alike. So do we think this is true, David? Well, I think if Petra had died after the first show, that's exactly what they would have done. When you've got a show and you're hoping it's going to run for 50 years, you know, <laughs> like we're hoping with this show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what... Yes, you've, you've, they must have made a point of introducing... This is a new sort of television we're doing where the programme has pets and the children who haven't got pets can maybe think it's their pet. They couldn't possibly say to those children on episode died. two, it died. <laughs> we, we left it in the car, in the car parts, <laughs> and we didn't, didn't leave a crack. <laughs> but we would probably have heard that. That probably would have gone I, I think you'd know that. I think you'd know I think it's, I think it's true. Good idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. OK, they're saying um, it's true. No, what are we saying it's true? Hang on, yeah. what? Yeah. 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 We're saying it's true, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, well, you're on your own on this one. You've screwed up before, both of you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You really know. OK, uh, they're going for that. David, are you saying it's true? We're saying it's You're true. You're saying it's true. Or we can reveal all. Oh, please. Yeah, it's true. Oh! It is true. Oh! That's amazing. That's... It is Good. true. Uh, Petra was secretly replaced by a look-alike after her death. Some people say that if you watched Blue Peter at the time, you could see clues that Petra had been replaced, like the rotting dog in the corner of the studio. <laughs> so, uh, Jimmy's fascinating fact is next, but first a masterclass from Simon Groom on how to present live TV. Uh, the thing about the tantalum is that, as I say, it's very light and very, very strong and uh, ideal for these darts. Um... Ah, where am I? I'm talking... <laughs> Sorry. Um... Darts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, completely lost. Right, OK, let's start about darts again. But also, uh, thinner. Now, the thing is, Goldie, will you go away about, uh, about them? <laughs> I think I'd better start talking about the dartboard because I'm absolutely lost. Let's start about the dartboard. Look, you wrote it all down. Here, have a look. It's so much to remember, but it's Thank terribly you. crucial. All right. <laughs> OK, well, let's start again. Um... <laughs> I like the way the woman came in and went, it's terribly crucial. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, there's never been anything less important than this <laughs> in your life. <laughs> yeah. I feel this pain. I did, I did Kids TV for years. I did Kids TV now. Did you? Constantly. And your co-presenters hate you. Like, what she did there? Oh, man, Kids TV presenters are always doing that. Great, if you watch CBBC now, you see them all being friendly and palsy and, oh, oh we're, we're having a great time and we're making stuff and doing stuff. But they will, at any stage, wish to pick up the safety scissors and stab the other person and go, yeah. how did you get top of the pops, you bitch? Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a vicious thing. So, Jimmy, what's your intriguing piece of information? Right, OK, my, my fact on this is uh, Simon Groom and Peter Duncan once had a fight in the Blue Peter Garden after a row over a BBC parking space. Now, what, why did they choose the Blue Peter Garden? They were in the garden filming a bit and they had a fight. They were filming a bit. The parking had pretty happened earlier. Yep. And they filmed it. Well, how did the parking anger reassert itself? They, they were fighting over parking spaces. It's all right, I've got this, Angus. Leave it. It's quite rare. <laughs> it's not like the... the... I can handle this. But uh, this is what I don't understand. There's been the an show. argument about the parking spaces. They're filming the piece in the garden. Why does the fight start there? So, so imagine you're the having a disagreement was... with someone. You're having a disagreement. I've never disagreed with anyone, but okay, I can imagine. Well, you're disagreeing with me right now. So, <laughs> this is what it's like. No, it's just you know we, we we both mean the same thing. It's just you don't realise it yet. <laughs> I think in fairness to them, it says it's about a parking space, but clearly they didn't get on with each other. The rumours were that Simon was slightly jealous of, of Peter. Maybe they actually really did get on deep down. There was a lot of love there. And but a lot of love and complicated <laughs> feelings and tears and hate and they start fighting. And, and then just to touch, to touch <laughs> another human. And then the fighting starts getting a bit of amorous and, you know, yeah, and then that, they're that kissing and David, fighting and scratching their clothes off each other. And then they fall in the pond and it's all fine and there's no sex. <laughs> you know what co-presenters are like, don't you, Eamon? That would never have happened in GMTV. We didn't have a garden to f***ing fight in. That was... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did you say to f*** and fight in or to f***ing fight? <laughs> David, what's your answer? Do you think it's true? 
Well, knowing presenters, I think it's very true. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it's no, I think it's a no. no. I, think it's, I think it's a lie. We're going for You're lie. You're going for lie? Yeah. OK, Jimmy, truth James. or lie? I can tell you that it is a lie. Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, Jimmy uh, was, in fact, lying. Uh, Simon Graham and Peter Duncan did not have a fight over parking space. Uh, the BBC parking spaces were awarded strictly on the basis of merit, so neither of them had one. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow said, I would rather die than let my kid eat cup of soup. <laughs> See, that is uh, an amazingly weird thing to say, isn't it? Although yeah. not as weird, of course, as if there'd have been a big pause between the word eat and cup. That would have been even better, because <laughs> then it would have been, I would rather die than let my kid eat cup of soup. <laughs> that would be a really weird thing to that say, would wouldn't it? That would be strange, yeah. wouldn't it? Fortunately, she didn't say she that. She didn't? No. How would Cup of Soup find its way into the realms of Gwyneth Paltrow's life? Well, she, uh, she was on a film been... set. So yeah, she, was, but... she was obviously given it whilst filming on an English film. She actually said, who eats this stuff? And what was the reply? That lots of the British public do, <laughs> yank. <laughs> But anyway, surely people drink it. Yes, I was going to say, was she told that it's usually diluted in water? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you would kind of go, this is surely... Yeah. What is this, future food? <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> what's, what's her husband's name again, that famous Chris bloke? Martin, yes. Yeah, he's in a band. Does he like cup of soup? Do we know anything about him? Of course, him? everyone knows Chris really? Martin likes a cup of soup. Well, <laughs> are you mad? Well, he has all the flavours written on the back of his hand. <laughs> Didn't Chris Martin say uh, a while back, on the back of one of his album sleeves, it said, for every album that we make, we're going to plant a tree, uh, sort of, of all the w paper that we've wasted mm. making this uh, CD. And I just thought to myself, can't you just cut out the middle, man? <laughs> just stop making CDs. <laughs> yeah, they so does said, he say, they, when, they when every they... album they make, you make, they plant a tree? I mean, they, well, they make an album once every one or two years. <laughs> That's been about four trees. My, <laughs> my dad plants more trees than that. <laughs> And he hasn't released an album in years. <laughs> uh, so, do you think Gwyneth is likely to have said this? Yeah, I probably think I so. I think it's true. Yeah, I, I'm I, with you, I sort of can hear her American. I mean, they call their daughter <coughs> Apple. They're quite sort of healthy people. Well, bachelors uh, claim that there are no additives in cup of soup. That's the company that makes it, not just unmarried men. <laughs> Married men who rely on kappa soup for their whole diet say it's actually there's no additives. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's bloody healthy actually. <laughs> <laughs> Knocks back the loneliness if you put whiskey in it. <laughs> Maybe you could give us uh, uh, some kind of uh, conclusion yeah. as to whether you think this is true or not. It's, this way I don't that. think it's true. Do you think it's true? No, no I don't, no, think, no. It's I don't think, so. we think it's a lie. They're saying it's a lie. Lee, I think it's true. I think it's true. Yeah, was it? I think it's true. Okay, true. All saying it's true. It is true. Wow. Absolutely right. Gwyneth Paltrow would rather die than let her child eat cup of soup. In fact, any child of Gwyneth's is more likely to be named cup of soup than served it. <laughs> Our specialist area is Saturday morning children's TV, a world where men's knitwear plummeted new depths and disaster was always just a haircut away. <laughs> so Lee is up uh, with his fact loosely related to these well-known pop critics. That's Pepsi and Shirley and heartache. Mrs. Thatcher, what about you? I didn't think it sounded like heartache at all. I thought the nearest it got to heartache was that almost ballet bit, you know, with several people standing up in the background moving. That was the nearest to heartache. Otherwise, it was thump, thump, thump. I accept very professional, but nothing like heartache. Yes, a love, yes, good voices, professional production, but not quite what I would expect of heartache. I would say three. Three, three for you. Yes. Would you dance to it? No, I wouldn't, because there was no melody. There certainly was rhythm. You could do a movement to it. You could do a movement to any rhythm. You could do a movement to a drum without having any song. But there was no melody and no heartache. Pepsi and Shirley not quite cutting it for Mrs Thatcher there. She was always more of a Guns N' Roses fan. Uh, anyway, uh, Lee, what is your related fact to that clip? Um, did you know that Mike Reed often uh, does a musical turn at the Tory party conference? And last year, it was a ten-minute political rap. Do you notice how the whole mood has dropped since we saw a clip of Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to live anymore. <laughs> Every, oh, yeah, I remember that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so what bit of the Tory... Is this, like, the main assembly bit? Yes. After so... the shadow chancellor's done his speech? Yeah, now, just... as usual, what you're all here for, Mike Reed's ten-minute rap. Yeah, but... <laughs> You've got, 
to remember that Tories are a bit stuffy and boring, aren't yeah, they? I mean, they're stuffy and boring, but they're not, you know, complete morons. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's true because the Tory party are so out of sync with reality that that's the sort of thing that they might go, Mike Reed's very popular, isn't he? <laughs> well, that Mike Reed. It all makes sense. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they could be that out of sync with reality <laughs> and still know where Parliament is. <laughs> well, I, I don't think it's true. I just don't think it's true. I'm well, prepared so, to go okay. with that. Well, you're the we captain. think it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, OK. Let's find out if you're right, Lee. It actually is true. <laughs> oh! It's a very hard one to do this. I'm sorry. How are, they, how are they ever going to get back into office? <laughs> Aren't they trying? Is it match fixing? <laughs> you know, it's someone bribing them to be terrible at politics. <laughs> Mike Green, ten minutes rapping. <laughs> what the f is that? <laughs> yeah, democracy in this country. But, 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 you know, the, the, the reason. The reason Tony Blair can start wars for no, you know, you know without asking people, is because there's no opposition. <laughs> you know, it's their fault. It's Mike Green's Reed's fault. fault. <laughs> the deaths of our servicemen <laughs> are on his conscience. <laughs> I, I sorry, do. Sorry, David. I've made a mistake. It's false. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, false, uh, no, false. it is true. I do uh, hope Mike Reed is watching this. Um, <laughs> yes, he does uh, traditionally round off the uh, Tory Party conference with a song. Uh, it saves security having to usher people out of the building. <laughs> Eurovision Song Contest, a fabulous and flamboyant festival of musical culture, or if you're not gay, a two-hour lake of shite. <laughs> uh, so Lee is first up with a fact about this 1980 Luxembourg entry, Papa Penguin. <laughs> Okay, that was the uh, spectacular Papa Penguin in 1980, but Lee has an even more extraordinary fact. Lee. Yes, now I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, fine, that was probably, well, definitely the only animal that was uh, featured that year in the Eurovision Song Contest. Well, stop your horses and get off, because I've got a fact. The Swedish entry that year also had a real live orangutan as the dancer. <laughs> um, so what are you thinking? Well, I, I just think, can you imagine how pissed off the poor Luxembourg team were going to be? We, we thought we'd nailed it this year with this man <laughs> who looks almost exactly like a penguin. <laughs> I mean, you can, if you look very carefully, you can tell that it's maybe a, another seabird. Yeah, but yeah. What, what about the welfare of the orangutan being made to be distressed in a programme that nobody really watches? I, I yeah, don't know whether the orangutan would be more upset being in Eurovision than in a better programme. <laughs> I think there's no chance that an orangutan might find even being in something excellent like The Office yeah, yeah. quite a distressing experience, because mm. he's not going to get it. Exactly. Very few orangutans understand the structure of a script. Oh, I think their critical faculties are almost nil. Yeah, they w he wouldn't get Terry Wogan's irony. Mm. <laughs> so... Well, well, you'd be surprised, in... David. <laughs> you'd be surprised. The question we have to ask ourselves, then, is how cruel are the Swedes? <laughs> are they... Would you put that into Google? Are they a cruel <laughs> people? I think if they got an orangutan, wouldn't it just... It would totally freak out and either go mental and smash up some sound equipment... Well, that'd be or... great. Maybe that was it. It just got a guitar and started smashing yeah, it. maybe they said, yeah. we don't need to write a song, we'll just see what the monkey does. <laughs> but, well, that's or, how Ginger Spice just, started. There's, there's... <laughs> You're probably, take, you're probably taking the whole... When I said they were dancing, you're probably... You know, in your head, you're thinking like a routine here, you know. <laughs> it simply was... job was to just... You know, it was obviously caged, so it was yeah. in a cage. It was caged? What's rubbish? What do you mean it's rubbish? I, I had, like, a pole. I had an image of it doing like that. <laughs> Sweden, actually, they're usually among the more competent entries to Eurovision, aren't they? I mean, They have Abba. won it in the past, I think. Yeah, yes. ABBA. They're Swedish. They're I, Swedish. I am quite into music. Uh, <laughs> So, um, they wouldn't have needed a gimmick like exactly, that. Exactly, they wouldn't have needed a gimmick like that. <laughs> I think true. I, I want it to be true. Well, I, w I wanted Father Christmas to be true. <laughs> <laughs> I still do. <laughs> what do you think, Wendy? You think? I think not. I think not. 
<clears throat> OK, well, uh, that's what you're saying. Uh, let's find out if you're right. Did Sweden ever have a orangutan in their band? Lee? Well, actually, it was a lie. <laughs> well done. It is a lie. Uh, Sweden did not have a live orangutan in their band. He left due to musical differences. Uh, they wanted to do an up-tempo power pop number, whereas he wanted a banana. Uh, in fact, to this day, the hairiest thing to actually enter Eurovision was Dana International. <laughs> so, uh, Len is next. Here's yeah. the Finnish entry from 1976, the majestically titled Pump Pump. <laughs> The answer there to the question, whatever happened to Demis Roussos? <laughs> that guy ate him. <laughs> uh, that was Pump Pump, anyway, by uh, Freddie and the Friends. Uh, but what is Len's additional piece of priceless trivia? Len? That was the Eurovision entry from Finland there, and my fact is that on the 27th of July in Finland, they celebrate Sleepyhead Day, when the last member of the family that awakes is taken down to the sea and thrown in. Well, the Sleepy question head. you're asking is, yes. is does it, would the same nation that produced that giant man and those girls be the location for a frenzy of splashes? That, that's pretty much the connection yeah. between... So where does yeah. Sleepy Head Day come from then, Len? Well, it, actually, it dates back to the Middle Ages, where evidently uh, seven Christians slept in a cave for 200 years. And um, so they came up with uh, this sleepy head. And I can actually tell you uh, the finish for that is Unikapaka. <laughs> Unikapaka. Where we get the Nikapaka glory from. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Originally it was mm. packed with sedatives. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? It does sound like one of those daft things that they would do. Yeah. You think? Yeah. We yeah. used to have a pram race in our village, so it's conceivable. Mm. <laughs> People chase, people chase cheeses in Wales, don't yes, they? Yeah. And the first person to get to the cheese... I don't know, gets the cheese. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, I think this so, is true. OK, Len, <laughs> truth or garbage? Funnily <laughs> enough, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Len, we're telling the truth. July the 27th is indeed National Sleepyhead Day in Finland, where the last person in the house to wake up is traditionally thrown in the nearest lake or sea. And July the 28th is, of course, National Granny's Body Washes Up on the Shore Day. <laughs> Water once removed from the sky so that Paul McCartney could perform Good Day Sunshine at a concert. Sorry, what do you mean? Well, you can move clouds if you really want. You, what you do is, you can either fly a plane over it and drop silver, yeah. silver oxide on it, or you can shoot a rocket into the cloud. You can basically steal other people's rain if you do that. The cloud's going nowhere. Oh, is you. this a dream? No, you can do it. <laughs> So you're telling me that it's possible to move no, the cloud? No, I think it's true. Yeah, you have to have it a lot of it money. It might sound like a stupid question, but why would he move the cloud? Well, because... Good the, day sunshine, Good, good day yeah. sunshine. It can't be good, bold, cloudy day sunshine. It's just because the song's called Good Day Sunshine. It doesn't mean you have to have the cloud move. Yeah, did but he, when he sang Don't Let Me Down, did he gaff tape himself to a lamppost? <laughs> it's like at my 21st, I didn't want is. clouds, so my dad had them removed. What? <laughs> First, it was outside and we didn't have a marquee, so he removed the clouds. Yeah. He no, exactly. Did he really? Did he send up planes? You mean, yeah, are two you planes. Not, did, you, did you honestly, at your 21st birthday, get a cloud moved? No, I got more than one. There was... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the whole hey. sky just over our house in Hampshire was blue. Yeah? Just to match my dress. You spoilt bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's> incredible! <laughs> What a lie. Of oh, course my lie. dad didn't have clouds removed and I never even had a 21st. God, you guys are so gullible. <laughs> <laughs> I like the you... sun slightly shifted to the right, <laughs> but not the clouds. Why you, Tara, why have you started lying to your own team? <laughs> lying lying is, a, is a skill that's useful in this game, but you found a way of using it that doesn't help you. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's called weather modification, is what they call it. What I don't understand about that is Paul McCartney is doing this concert for money, isn't he? He's going, he's doing a musical tour for money. Yes. That's his job. People are going to turn up to watch him sing Good Day Sunshine, whatever the weather. Why is it worth his while to spend $40,000 getting rid of the clouds? You're going to ask the crowd, look, I've got 25 grand here. We can either get rid of the clouds or it's vodka for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's always sunny when you're pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but to your answer, the fact is you definitely can do it. The the question is, did Paul McCartney have it done no, for this honestly, one day? No, honestly, and they were removed at my 21st. I just didn't like you it did, when you really? said spoilt bitch, but, so I lied. But, yeah, it was a double bluff. But, yeah, I think Oh, you did have it done, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, so we can keep it in, cos I don't want yeah. to lose that story. I'd like to redress my comments. No, it's true. That's a really good idea. Well done for being so wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> did you really have that, though? Yeah, you could do it. You don't need a big old Gulf Stream, just a little plane. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, actually, it's not a thing about being rich. It's slightly to do with being rich. If well, you get a plane to move yeah, a cloud, it doesn't, I'm saying it doesn't have to be a Learjet. I mean, we live on a farm. You don't yeah, as opposed to these few. council estate Cessna light aircraft, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think some of the problems of drought in Africa have been caused by too many people having 21st birthday parties <laughs> too close to each other? <laughs> So, David, um, what are you thinking? I think it's eminently plausible, unless my team overrules me. Well, I'm not. I'm going to remain silent, and if you're wrong, I'm going to really be furious with you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so no okay. pressure. They're saying it's true. Uh, Lee? Well, uh, well I, uh, what do you think, Tara? What are we well, saying? I think it's true. Okay. He must have used my plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's absolute rubbish. Uh uh, well, I'm going to go with Tara because if she knows about moving weather, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go with that. You want to marry me now? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, hand on heart, without a hint of irony, you are without doubt the most frightening person I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Been like this. My grandparents were brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's more extraordinary than any fact we've had on the show so far. <laughs> Are you saying it's true or untrue? I'll, You're going I'll, for true. I'll go with Crazy Lil and say. <laughs> <laughs> and say it is. I'll say, I'll say it's absolutely uh, uh, spiffing well true. Okay, <laughs> and I can uh, tell you that it is absolutely yeah. true. Well done. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Paul McCartney did have clouds removed so he could perform Good Day Sunshine at a concert. Later that same concert, the audience asked to have its ears removed before he performed the Frog Chorus. <laughs> this week, our area of specialist interest is Tomorrow's World, uh, the show that predicted the way all our lives would be in the future, although strangely didn't foresee that we would be living our lives without the television programme Tomorrow's World. <laughs> OK, Harry has an intriguing piece of information loosely related to this. The flamboyant Prenderville takes the cue ball and places it for his opponent, the world champion of the year 2000, about to pick up the cue ball. <laughs> Our champion is, in fact, not yet switched on. Well, we appear to... Nothing appears to be happening. Let me introduce, first of all... Oh, wait a minute. Oh. And the opponent's back at it. He's in for a big break. Takes the cue and the red into the bottom pocket. <laughs> a flawless piece of broadcasting. A cheap robot, a snooker ball that has to pot, and all on live television. Who'd have thought anything could possibly go wrong? But what's Harry's related fact, Harry? Uh, one episode showcased a toaster connected to the internet that burned a weather forecast into your toast. <laughs> wow! <laughs> There's too much information for my brain to digest. The toaster does... It, it dials up the internet and your toast pops out with a cloud, sun or raindrop symbol on it. I mean, oh, it's oh. symbol on the toast, right. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, sailors yeah. aren't using it, are yeah. they? <laughs> <laughs> There's a big thing we've got to get right with the weather, otherwise we could all die. Don't worry, check in on the old world service. No. I've got a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> Little sun symbol. Let's get out there. Never seen again. It's, it's, yes, uh, I mean, not a very detailed weather forecast. Yeah, this sounds like an ITV weather forecast, what I'm hearing. <laughs> Sonny! <laughs> by Power Gen. <laughs> <laughs>
It was voted uh, one of the 80 most important ideas of 2001. Yeah, I think it's really good. You think it's true? Yeah, definitely. Tara, you've got a machine that dries you when you come out of the shower. Yeah, yeah I do, actually. How do you know that? The Filipino boy told him. It's <laughs> It's a what? It's just air. It just kind of, it's like a whole room. It just air you. Well, most people have air in their bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> what, hey, what, it's very unhygienic to dry with towels, apparently. Right. How many people die of towel-related diseases? <laughs> I mean, this is a level of hygiene that clearly doesn't actually matter. No, let me it's tell like you. when they say there are more germs on your chopping board than are on your Lucy. <laughs> well, if that's so, it clearly doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> They don't do anything And to I you. just say before you shoot me, I didn't design my bathroom. Someone else put the air in. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're going to push you for an answer. Uh, I'm going to let uh, true, Tara make the decision. True, true, true. Uh, but you are team captain. Your word is final. Yeah. OK, that's true. Yeah, cos he follows. I've got him under my spell. <laughs> okay. um, let's see if they are remotely it correct. It is a true. Yay! It's a true. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, Tomorrow's World did feature a taste of the burn. The weather forecast onto your toast and uh, proof, if proof were needed. Let's see what we can expect from the weather. It's a prototype, so I have to help it a little bit. A uh, bit cloudy that side, but this is the side that matters. And look, tomorrow it is going to be cloudy. That, that is shit. <laughs> that is really shit. I imagine how it would be, and I imagine it about ten times better than that. <laughs> Tell you what, it look, doesn't it look more like? Uh oh, looks like there's going to be an atom bomb yeah. dropped on us <laughs> again. Oh. <laughs> It's brilliant. That could become addictive every morning. Oh, I wonder what it's going to be. Don't open the curtains. Let's wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes out. It you makes life I fun. Must, I must, you, that doesn't sound like you have to struggle to make things fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Oh, yeah, I can't yeah. wait till a vague shape on my toast gives me a <laughs> shit idea of what the weather might be like. <laughs> and then I'll open the curtains. It'll be different.